Hey everybody, um, it's Nurse Noob Joe, even though I'm not a nurse yet, I'm still a noob, and uh, more than likely will be a nurse in no time. Um, anyways, welcome back. We're, today we're going to go on to chapter 2 uh, in the ATI Fundamentals book. Um, safe, effective care environment, section management of care, chapter 2, the interprofessional team. So let's get straight down to business. All right. Question one. A nurse is caring for an older adult client who lives alone and is to be discharged in three days. He starts, uh, he states that it is difficult to prepare adequate nutritious meals at home for just one person. To which of the following members of the healthcare team should the nurse refer him? A. Registered Dietitian B. Occupational Therapist C. Physical Therapist or D. Social Worker The answer is D. Uh, social Worker A social worker can make arrangements for a meal delivery service to provide nutritious meals daily or, recommended, or recommend a congregate meal site near the client's home. Question 2 a goal for the client who has difficulty with self-feeding due to rheumatoid arthritis is used is is to use adaptive devices. The nurse caring for the client should initiate a referral with which of the following members of the interprofessional care team? A. Social worker. B. Certified nursing assistant. C. Registered dietitian. Or D. Occupational therapist. The answer is D. Occupational therapists can assist clients who have physical challenges to use adaptive devices and strategies to help with self-care activities. Moving on to question three. A client who is post-operative following knee arthroplasty is concerned about the adverse effects of medication he is receiving for pain management. Which of the following members of the interprofessional care team may assist the client in understanding the medication's effects? Select all that apply. A. Provider. B. Certified nursing assistant. C. Pharmacist. D. Registered nurse. E. Respiratory therapist. Uh, the answers are A, C, and D. A is the client's provider must be knowledgeable about any medication he prescribes for the client, including its actions, effects, and interactions. C. A pharmacist must be knowledgeable about any medication she dispenses for the client, including its actions, effects, and interactions. D. A registered nurse must be knowledgeable about any medication she administers to the client, including its actions, effects, and interactions. Question 4. A client who has had a cerebral vascular accident, a.k.a. stroke, has persistent problems with dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing. The nurse caring for the client should initiate a referral with which of the following members of the interprofessional care team? A. Social worker. B. Certified nursing assistant. C. Occupational therapist. D. Speech language pathologist. The answers are D. A speech language pathologist can initiate specific therapy for clients who have difficulty with feeding due to swallowing difficulties. 5. Question 5. A nursing instructor is acquainting a group of nursing students with the roles of various members of a healthcare team they will encounter on a medical surgical unit. When she gives examples of the types of tasks certified nursing assistants may perform, which of the following client activities should she include? Select all that apply. Bathing, A, B, ambulating, C, toileting, D, determine pain level, E, measuring vital signs. The answer to five is A, B, C, and E. Um, A, it is within the scope of the CNA's duties to provide basic care to the clients, such as bathing. B, it is within the scope of the CNA's duties to provide basic care to clients, such as assisting with them with the ambulation. C, um, basic scope, blah, 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 such as assisting them with toileting. And E, uh, measuring and recording their vital signs.